this plant with the gorgeous markings here is Tenanthe burley marxii. And it is traditionally a plant from Brazil, but has made its way into the houseplant market. And for those of you who are familiar with Marantaceae or the prayer plant family, those are the plants that kind of like fold up and fold down and people always love them because of the beautiful markings and kind of the purplish red um, undersides of this plant, which makes it such you know, one that you just really want to bring home. Um, this one's actually a little less finicky than a lot of the other members of the prayer plant family. And I think the reason for that is that it has slightly thicker leaves than some of the Calatheas and the Marantas. And it also has this kind of cuticular sheen. So I think that it actually holds on to its water quite well. I have multiple Tenanthes throughout my house. I have some in my green wall, I have one in my closet garden, and I have one that's been hanging in my vertical swing garden, probably two feet back from my northeast facing window for quite some time. And so I've had a lot of time to actually observe these plants. The one in particular in my vertical swing garden actually was closer to my northeast facing window, just by about a foot, a foot to a, maybe even a foot and a half. And it started to curl its leaves in. So, you know, kind of like curling them along the edges. And I found that a lot of prayer plants will curl their leaves as a way to shut off water loss because these are a little bit more of a thin leaf variety of plant and are understory plants, um, typical that you would see uh, understory plants with kind of red or purple bottoms. And I actually speak about that way more in detail in the coloration of plants in my houseplant masterclass if you're actually curious about that. But um, these plants are very sensitive to water loss. So you're going to want to keep them relatively moist, which means that you could probably go with a less well-draining mixture. Um, I water my Tenanthes probably two to three times a week. And these plants are not even in any kind of direct light. You know, they are really pulled back from uh, my northeast facing window, which doesn't get a tremendous amount of light. It's very gentle to begin with. So uh, if you have plant, if you have a, a house that has a little bit lower to medium light conditions, then this is gonna be good for you. However, like I said, it's a little bit more high maintenance, although not as high maintenance as the other members of the family. One of the typical things that I do find that it gets is brown along the edging and also on the tips of the plant. This can be for so many different reasons. One, it could be very inconsistent watering. Two, it might actually be a buildup of fertilizers or salts in the soil. Um, and three, it could just be a lack of humidity. These plants actually really do love to have more high humidity. So if you're giving it moderate to high, it's going to be happier. And I actually try to give all of my um, prayer plants distilled water. Doesn't always happen and sometimes I get lazy or sometimes I actually run out of distilled water. But it, the reason for that is I'm, I'm just a little bit uncertain about what is in my own tap water. You know, oftentimes you find fluoride or other kind of chlorine or other things. So if it's not filtered, then you might actually be putting that into these plants, which I think are generally pretty sensitive plants. As far as the growth structure, this is pretty much how the plant grows. It's a pretty compact, bushy grower. Even the one that I've had growing in my vertical swing garden for maybe about four years now um, is still very bushy. It might get a little bit stemmy down here, but not so much. I mean, so if you still want this kind of like compact growing plant, if you like the idea of how it like folds up in prayer, then this is going to be a really interesting plant for you. Fertilizing, I'd go a little bit gentle on the fertilizer, but you can do it from a bi-weekly to a monthly basis. And you could go with an organic fertilizer or a well-balanced uh, low fertilizer, like a 555 or a 101010. And if you're doing a synthetic fertilizer, just cut it by half because again, these will have burning at the tips if you're over fertilizing this particular plant. As far as pests go, I've, I have seen other pests on plants that are um, in this family, but the Tenanthi I think are relatively good. Like I, I, I might've had a couple mealybugs on my one, but I, I don't recall any kind of major pest pressures. And again, I think the cuti cuticle on this particular leaf actually helps protect it against things like maybe thrips, which can be a little bit more common, or at least they've become a little bit more common in my household. But otherwise, a very interesting plant to grow, and if you want a prayer plant, these are gonna be the less finicky ones.